Well, most it, people know that I'm a radical, so. Because it isn't the best thing that's ever happened, I must say. But is it, does, well, is it needed in the changes that are happening over the world and all this? Is it like required in the next few when, years? Whenever I look at a question like that, I go for what's happening in the spirit world. And the truth is there is schools happening in the spirit world, but not anything like the schools that are happening here on earth. They're totally different. In the spirit world, what happens is the children decide what they want to study and they actually create their environment to study and then they study the things they want to study. So in other words, if that was applied here on earth, the children would actually build the school that they want, exactly how they want it. They'd design it and build it. And then in that school they would study exactly the things they want to study. Right? And it wouldn't be based, it's not based on a uh, grading system or anything like that in the spirit world. It's based on your passion. What is your passion? It's recognising your passion. Unfortunately today on the planet a lot of people suppress their passion. And a lot of school does, that's what a lot of school does too, doesn't it? Like you really, like you might be really into computers but you only get one lesson a week. You know, or you might be really into biology but you only get two lessons a week. Um, the rest of the lessons about English and all these other things they say you have to learn. But the best way to learn is to have a passion and then learn everything about that particular thing to make it easier to learn. So for example, there is a lot of mathematics, for example, in biology. Right? And there's a lot of chemi chemistry in biology. And if we wanted to focus on biology, for example, as, a, as an area of study, we would have to learn chemistry and mathematics and quite a number of other principles in the whole process. But we'd do it because we want to do it and not because some, so somebody's forcing it down our throat. So the short answer is I don't feel there's much worth in schooling at all at the present. Right? Right? And uh, why are you pointing at <laughs> Say, why are you pointing? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Mum's trying to convince you otherwise. Oh, well, sort of, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you feel mum is. What do you feel? Um, she's, allowed to, she's allowed to have her own feelings and you're allowed to have yours. Well, I've always had an idea that we should be able to learn everything gradually, yep. not having to go to school. We should just want to learn what we want to learn and then develop in those areas instead of learning a large variety of different things and branching off into whatever when we get to uni. Yeah. But... And mum has always wanted me to go to school and I'm not like, well, I'm smart, but I'm not the top. Yeah. I'm going to a school called Queensland Academy of Health Sciences, so I'm smart, but I don't know, it's hard. Yeah. So my feelings are quite different to what the average parent's feelings are. And my feelings are when you find your passion, as a parent my role is to help you find your passion, and then once you find your passion, my role is to try and help you achieve your passion. A lot of times though what happens as parents is we, we, we actually provide everything in a physical way to our children. So we finish up not teaching our children how to, how to actually cook, how to clean. And Do you know how to cook for yourself? <coughs> completely? Yeah, very, quite well actually. Okay, so that's fantastic, right? Now many parents don't even teach that to their children. Uh, most children, by the time, most boys, by the time they're 16, have got no idea how to cook, right? Or how to, how to do the ironing. I'm having trouble with the ironing. Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> All that kind of stuff, right? And, and so they're, they're now, now there's obviously things involved in that, like, which is an issue of self-esteem. Does that make sense? Like, if I really want to look after myself, then I will want to look after my person and that looking after that person is going to mean I want to cook for that person, this person here. I want to clean for this person here because I love myself. So a lot of times though as parents we teach our children to become dependent upon us as parents, which is a very damaging thing to do. Right? But we also teach them to try, teach our children to fit into society because we have these deep emotional injuries inside of ourselves when we didn't fit into society and what happened to us in our lives as a result of it. So for many of us as parents, we have these deep feelings inside of us of like this terrible feeling that our child's not going to fit into society, our child's not going to succeed, our child's not going to... And we get into this terrible panic inside of ourselves, right? And then we start imposing upon our children our rules rather than actually allowing our children to learn things God's way, which is a very 
symbiotic way, which is what you've described. So my feelings are um, schools will exist, but not in the form that we currently have them, where you're forced to go. But then again, if you don't go, you will also be asked to look after yourself. And instead of having your parents look after you. Does that make sense? Like, so for, instance, for example, is it right for me to expect you to provide my food if I'm not willing to provide my food for myself? No. No, it wouldn't be loving, would it, for, to, for me to expect you to do it? Quite often as children, though, we grow up being taught that our parents will do it and we get to age like 16, 17 or whatever and we still expect them to keep doing it. And, but we don't want to go to school, we don't want to go to uni, we don't want to do all these other things, but then again we don't want to work for ourselves and do all of those things either. So I feel there are a lot of things that can be learnt with the child taking complete responsibility for their own life right from a very early age. And unfortunately the way the laws are constructed on the planet, that's not even allowed in many cases. So you know, how many, how many 12 year old children are allowed to work if they wanted to work? No, it's pretty hard to find a job if you're a 12 year old nowadays, um, if you wanted to find that job. Not, not being influenced by your parents, but you wanted it. And so my feelings are, in the end there will probably not be any schools like there currently is, but there will certainly be large institutions like universities and schools that are created through the desire of the students banding together and wanting to create something in a certain way for whatever reasons. Some of them will be positive and some of them won't even be positive. And that's fine in the end because that's what you're allowed to do. So um, I feel forcing a child to go to school is very damaging to, to the child. Yeah. And the main reason why most parents continue to force their children to go to school is because they're afraid of the system and what's going to happen to the parent if they stop forcing their child to go to school. Well, I don't mind going to school. It's actually good hanging out with friends and all yep. that. But uh, should, we, should we be learning something else instead of the basic math, science, physics, um, music? You should be learning what you have a passion to learn. Okay. And, and then incorporating math, science and physics into that, passion. into that passion. So, for example, let's say I wanted to build a house. Right? So I start off with nothing. So we could easily teach this in schools from a very young age, what I'm going to just illustrate here. Let's say a child, like an eight-year-old child, six-year-old child wants to build a house. There's no reason. Why. Like we were talking to some children the other day. How old is Adam? He'd be 10, 12. Um, he wants to build his own house. Right? So he doesn't want to live with mum and dad. He wants to live near mum and dad in his own house. So, we, so how many of your parents would be severely emotionally challenged with that? Oh, like many of you would be, right? But he wants to live in his own house near mum and dad. He doesn't want to live with mum and dad. So, so what we started doing is we started talking to him about the principles of building from a, from a, you know, from a mathematical uh, point of view. And we talked about this whole principles of adobe, you know, the building with, with the land, building with soil, building with um, uh, structures that, that can maintain... Uh, themselves even under lots of severe stress and pressure. And we started talking about how, you know, like curve, curve structures, for instance, curve structures like that, uh, if they're supported on the ends, can, can actually withstand huge amounts of forces. And a curve structure like that, for example, will survive a, a cyclone or a, or a tornado much easier than a square structure like that will. Right? And we started talking too about how square structures today are built from milled wood or steel, a lot of them, and concrete, whereas these kind of structures can be built from the earth, from clay, sand, and all these kind of things that would withstand even more pressures than these will. And then we started talking about the science involved in it and the mathematics involved in it, because he wants to build a house. Right? So we started, started talking about how to make something have a square, for example. There's whole rules of Pythagoras in that, isn't there, in terms of... How do you actually do that in practice? Make a square on the ground, for example. How do you make it level using water? So you don't have actually a spirit level. You only have a water. You don't have water. How do you make this thing level on the ground? You know, so that you put 
you put something circular at the top and it doesn't roll down somewhere in the building. There's all these mathematical principles that can all be incorporated into this young man Adam's desire to build this house of his own. And I would be encouraged, I would, I would encourage him not to go to school, but rather to do everything he can possibly do to learn about how to build this structure. And he built it. He actually built the house. And he could easily, by the time he's 13, have a house built for himself. And on top of that, have learnt all of these rules of mathematics that he would normally earn, learn in first and second year high school. Yeah. And that's how it would be in the future, I feel. And when you've got groups of children doing this, so you imagine this is a now larger structure, and groups of children doing this, the children can actually do all of this, and that all the teacher does is guide the process. That's all, all that needs to happen. <laughs> she tries to, she's trying to take it away from you. <laughs> a woman trying to take something away from you. That's a law of attraction event. <laughs> <laughs> Related to your mother too, by the way. <laughs> we, know we know that one, yeah. Um, well, next topic, I guess.